It can hold 45 miles an hour all day without complaining. The engine practically takes care of itself. That's an automatic clutch and three-speed shift he's using. Foolproof and simple. And as for safety, with Honda's cam-type brakes on both wheels, you stop on a dime. You'll have a lot of fun riding a Honda. The Honda Motor Company is widely known as a symbol of Japan's thoroughness and its thriving economy. Being the largest motorcycle manufacturer in the world, one might think that the company's history is full of happy coincidences. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Sarichiro Honda, the company's founder, had to survive and overcome actual catastrophes to make his dreams come true. From car crashes to earthquakes, from failure to rejection, Sorichiro is an example of human perseverance. It all started about a century ago in a small town in Japan. Welcome to Planet Biz. Sorichiro Honda was born in Hamamatsu, Japan on November 17, 1906. His mother, Mika, was a weaver and even designed her own loom to weave complicated patterns. And his father, Jihei was a blacksmith who operated a bicycle repair business. In those years, bicycle transport became extremely popular in big cities. His father was buying broken bikes for a knockdown price in Tokyo, repairing and selling them. So Ichiro was helping his father literally from the crib, and the bicycle parts and tools were his favorite toys. Helping his father in the workshop, he always got dirty with grime. But regardless of his clumsiness, Sarichiro was very clever. At the end of the semester of school, all students were handed grade reports, which parents had to stamp with the family seal instead of putting signatures. So Ichiro was not an excellent student, but he did not want to disappoint his parents, so he cut his family's initials out of an old tire and signed a grade report himself. As soon as the other children heard of Sorichiro's brilliant idea, they started approaching him for fake seals of their family seals. He was more than happy to fulfill these requests. Unfortunately, the swindle was exposed. His teacher just smiled and notified Sarichiro's father. His father left him without food and put him in a corner on his knees for a whole day. However, it wasn't for the small fraud that he had cooked up, but for the fact that he could have put more effort into creating the seals. In 1922, the 15-year-old Sarichiro dropped out and decided that he had enough of formal education. At the same time, he noticed a job ad in the newspaper. The Art Shokai Auto Repair Shop in Tokyo needed an assistant. After that, he left home alone and went straight to the capital. He was accepted, but as the youngest employee, there was nothing left for him other than cleaning and preparing meals for his colleagues. Despite this, the owner of the auto repair shop allowed Sarichiro to help in the second workshop, where he was designing a race car every night. Then, during an earthquake in 1923, he drove out three cars from a burning garage, even though he had never sat behind the wheel before. After this, he was assigned as second assistant at Art Chakai, and besides, he was riding all sorts of vehicles at races and their team took first place at the 5th Japan Motor Car Championship in November 23, 1924. A lot of other victories followed. Thanks to Sarichiro, the Art Chakai workshop became one of the most popular garages in Tokyo. Five years after the earthquake, it expanded by opening several branches in the province. One of them was led by the now 21-year-old Sarichiro in the town of Hamamatsu. However, he had bigger visions of himself. He decided to produce piston rings, which he believed would revolutionize the automobile efficiency. Sarichiro literally lived in the workshop, developing piston rings and sending them to the biggest car company in Japan, Toyota, in hopes of getting discovered, but it didn't give any fruit. Even after investing almost all his savings and spending days and nights in the research laboratory, none of the directors at Art Chakai supported him, which abruptly ended his dream. Only after that, he admitted his incompetence in the task and realized the importance of know-how. Up to that time, Honda had considered science useless. If the theory promoted creativity, then all teachers would have been the inventors, Honda was saying. Eventually, he decided to acquire the necessary knowledge in the technological school of Hamamatsu. However, he still refused to take any examination. To him, only the knowledge mattered. He didn't care about papers. Unfortunately, in 1936, his luck took a turn for the worse. Honda took part in the Japanese high-speed rally in the suburbs of Tokyo and almost died. His car raced at breakneck speed, 
74 miles per hour. He crashed into a sudden stopped car at the finish. The car was lost forever. Honda's left arm was fractured, his shoulder was dislocated, and his face was damaged. He spent three months at the hospital. As a consequence, the road to the racing sport was closed forever for him. Being at the hospital, Sorichiro received even more bad news. Out of the 300,000 piston rings which he had produced in recent years and sent for examination in the Toyota company, only 50 were accepted for consideration, and only three pieces passed quality control tests. Also, Honda was dropped out of college because he continued refusing the exams. He used to say, a degree is worth less than a ticket to a movie. A degree is a piece of paper that confirms that, during his or her youth, the student was diligent, disciplined, and probably quite detached from real life. By this time, Honda was close to bankruptcy and was recovering from a terrible accident. Where any other person would have called it quits, Honda remained relentless about continuing his attempts. After recovering, Honda opened his own business in Hamamatsu. In 1937, Honda founded the company Tokai Seiki and started producing piston rings again because the production technology had finally been developed. Things went uphill. During World War II, Honda's company was providing Toyota with the piston rings by 40% and also supplied parts to shipbuilding and aircraft manufacturing companies. But with the defeat of Japan in World War II, Takai Seki came to an end. In 1945, his luck took another turn for the worse. The town of Hamamatsu was subjected to massive bombardment by American aircraft, which erased the factory from the landscape. Honda assumed that the country was entering into a period of poverty and ruin and decided not to restore the factory, but sold the business to Toyota for only 450,000 yen. He then spent 10,000 yen on the purchase of an alcohol tank. By installing it in his yard, he said publicly that he was going to rest a year. Indeed, Sorichiro spent a year in drunken revels treating friends with homemade whiskey. After recovering, Honda opened a new factory in 1946 with an auspicious name. Honda Technology Research Institute. He became engaged in the artisanal production of mopeds. He fitted a generator engine of a tiny army radio to a bicycle, used a rubber hot water bottle as a fuel tank, and filled it with fur oil. There was plenty of fur oil in the countryside of Japan in those times. Honda sold 1,500 of these mopeds. By 1947, he replaced the engine with a two-stroke engine of his own design. It was the first original Honda A-Type moped. And after two years, the institute became the Honda Motor Company. Two years later, he started the production of a model with a four-stroke engine. In 1959, Honda opened its first dealership in the United States. By this time, Honda was already the largest Japanese manufacturer of motorcycles, leaving behind not only 50 Japanese competitors, but also 200 competitors from other countries. The rapidly growing company required completely new approaches to management. The management improvements implemented by Sorichiro Honda were truly revolutionary. Based on his experience in school and college, he decided to abandon the management pyramid. A design engineer's promotion depended not on a certain diploma, but on personal achievements. Sorichiro had always opposed the hierarchical form of management, believing that, in general, people work harder and more innovatively if they are not forced. Honda's system was designed to raise geniuses who sooner or later will replace him as president. Sorichiro chose not to transfer his business to heirs, which played a very important role in the company receiving long-term bank loans. The financiers were confident that it would be passed into the hands of highly qualified professionals. In his memoir, he wrote, no matter how outstanding the company's founder could be, there is no guarantee that his son would be capable of the same. The company's management should be given to a person who has the distinctive qualities of a leader. His motorcycle business was rapidly gaining momentum. In 1961, the company was producing 100,000 motorcycles per month, and by 1968, the company was producing 1 million motorcycles per month. Having reached the top of the motorcycle industry, Honda decided that he can finally proceed with the implementation of a cherished dream to create automobiles. When he was a child, he was literally mesmerized when he first saw a car. In his memoir, he wrote, Forgetting about everything in the world, I was running after the car. I was deeply moved. I think it was then, although I was very young, I had the idea that someday I will construct a car myself. His first car debuted in 1962. 
Japanese officials tried to convince him of the futility of the project, arguing that the company did not need another car manufacturer, but he did not listen to their arguments. In 1970, Sarichiro Honda was winning in the highly competitive automobile industry. He took on the problem of exhaust gases. None of the world's automakers could handle it directly and solved it by creating a Cadillac converter. Only Honda was able to design the first engine with a relatively low pollution level. The engine was installed in the Honda Civic model that was launched into production in 1975 and quickly gained immense popularity. Among his employees, he was known as Mr. Thunderstorm. He got his nickname for emotional outbursts. Honda was loved, but feared at the same time. He served as an example of a man with perseverance, modesty, pleasant manners, and the ability to accept mistakes as a valuable asset to his employees and family. All his life, this rebellious businessman was tirelessly fighting with traditions. But he never renounced his errors, about which he said, Looking back on my work, I feel that I was doing nothing more than mistakes, blunders, and serious omissions. But I am proud of the achievements. Although I made one mistake after another, my mistakes and failures never occurred for the same reasons. Honda had worked for 65 years in the company and personally tested every new car. In 1973, Honda Motor Company celebrated its 25th anniversary. During the board of directors meeting dedicated to this event, Sarichiro Honda declared that he was going to retire. The new president, as expected, was chosen among the employees. The founding father was fond of saying that the company thrives when the former chief appears there as seldom as possible, so his departure from the office was final. Later, even at his advanced age of 77, he held a pilot's license, enjoyed skiing, golf, hang gliding, and ballooning. Sarichiro died on August 5, 1991. By the end of his life, he came up with a large store of achievements, some of which were 470 inventions, 150 patents, and he was the first Japanese leader to enter the American Automotive Hall of Fame. Starting a business with only a few thousand dollars, he created the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer and the eighth largest automobile manufacturer. According to him, the secret of his success lies in the fact that he has always followed the method of trial and error. Another essential quality of a businessman, according to Sarichiro, is the ability to take risks. He did not admit defeat and was willing to risk everything for his beliefs and ideas to achieve a set goal. In his memoir, he wrote, Many people dream of success. I believe that success can be achieved only through repeated failure and self-analysis. Success represents the 1% of your work, which results from the 99% that is called failure. If you are not afraid of it, success will come to you itself. For more inspiring business stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.